the planet Pluto, organized at the farthest reaches of our planetary gathering, is wrapped by an immense number of cold divine bodies and space rocks within the Kuiper Belt, an enormous region of space beyond Neptune. Once revered as the tenth planet, Pluto gets its name from the Roman deity of the underworld. However, in a significant moment in cosmic history, in 2006, Pluto was reclassified from its planetary status, reflecting the evolving understanding of our limitless region. Our current enthusiasm for the planetary gathering portrays a weaving of eminent components, different space rocks, a select assembly of minor planets, and a record of just eight conventional planets. Throughout human history, navigating many long stretches of cosmic discernment and examination, our interpretation of these bodies has evolved significantly. We've gained insights into their designs, methods of acting, and probable behavior, painting a more nuanced picture of our galactic climate. Yet, amid our growing data, the allure of our own reality continues to invite examination and revelation. The James Webb Space Telescope, a pinnacle of modern astronomical advancement, stands ready to uncover some of these waiting insights, including those involving Pluto. Despite its modest size and eccentric orbit, Pluto has held an outstanding place in the hearts of many for years, flaunting the distinction of being the smallest celestial object in our nearby planetary system. Pluto's reclassification ignited a strong reaction from the public, highlighting the deep connection people felt toward this distant body. However, scientific caution dictated that for an object to deserve planetary status, it must adhere to three key criteria, orbiting the Sun, having sufficient mass to assume a nearly round shape under its gravity, and clearing its orbit of debris, criteria that Pluto ultimately failed to meet with its uneven orbital path. The term planet has undergone an intriguing evolution throughout cosmic history, initially encompassing any large celestial body seen in the sky, including moons and asteroids. Pluto's discovery in 1930 by American astronomer Clyde Tombaugh stirred worldwide excitement, only to be followed by discoveries of similarly sized objects within its region, raising doubts about its planetary status. Amid this debate, Professor Mike Brown's significant discovery of Eris, a Kuiper Belt object comparable in size to Pluto, further complicated matters, challenging the traditional definition of a planet. This led to a heated discussion within the astronomical community, culminating in Pluto's reclassification as a dwarf planet during the International Astronomical Union IAU, meeting in Prague in 2006. Subsequently, Pluto's evolution from a planetary status to a dwarf planet role serves as a testament to the dynamic nature of scientific understanding and the ongoing quest for clarity in the vast domain of the universe. Following extensive debate, a revised definition of a planet was proposed and put to a vote during the August meeting of the IAU, the body responsible for naming celestial objects and defining astronomical terms. In this meeting, the definition of a planet was adjusted to encompass both Pluto and Eris, signaling a departure from the conventional understanding of what constitutes a planet and reflecting a more nuanced perception of celestial objects. Eris, previously known as 2003 UB313 and nicknamed Xena, was renamed after the Greek goddess of discord, reflecting the discussions and debates surrounding its classification. Mike Brown, a planetary scientist at Caltech whose work contributed to Pluto's reclassification, received widespread recognition for his efforts, earning the nickname Pluto Killer on social media. This reclassification prompted a brief revision of educational materials, including standards and textbooks, to reflect the new understanding of Pluto and Eris as dwarf planets. However, not all members of the scientific community immediately embraced the IAU's definition. Some planetary scientists, particularly those focused on Pluto and similar objects, expressed concerns about the new criteria, sparking ongoing discussions within the field of planetary science. These debates extended beyond scientific circles and into broader public discourse, raising questions about the feasibility of precise classification and the implications of renaming long-established astronomical terms. Despite these discussions, scientific inquiry continued unabated. In 2015, NASA's New Horizon spacecraft conducted a historic flyby of Pluto, providing unprecedented insights into this distant world. The mission revealed a dynamic and geologically active planetoid, with features like nitrogen ice plains and a prominent heart-shaped region, captivating the public's imagination. As we consider these advancements, it becomes clear that our understanding of the nearby planetary system and its constituent bodies continues to evolve. The renaming of Pluto and Eris as dwarf planets represents a milestone in our ongoing exploration of the universe, highlighting the complexity and diversity of worlds beyond Earth. As New Horizons journeyed through space at an astonishing speed of 32,300 miles per hour, it captured detailed images of Pluto's near side during its closest approach. 
However, due to the spacecraft's trajectory and the position of the Sun, Pluto's far side, often referred to as the dark side, remained hidden from view. Analysts painstakingly analyzed images taken by the spacecraft before its encounter to glean insights into this mysterious region. Despite the challenges presented by the limited scope of these images, they offered an exceptional level of detail, allowing scientists to observe surface features down to about one mile across. This level of clarity far surpassed previous observations, including those from the Hubble Space Telescope, which orbits Earth. The analysis of these images has provided new perspectives on Pluto's dynamic nature, with scientists investigating features such as a possible subsurface ocean and surface processes. Recent discoveries, such as the presence of ammonia on Pluto's surface and intriguing ice formations, continue to reveal the complexity of this world. Richard Binzel, a planetary scientist involved in the New Horizons mission, describes Pluto as the gift that keeps on giving as it continues to surprise researchers with its intricacy. Before the New Horizons mission, the most detailed images of Pluto came from the Hubble Space Telescope, which revealed a world with distinct surface features. However, New Horizons provided essential close-up views of Pluto's landscape, including the striking heart-shaped region and the vast frozen plain known as Sputnik Planum. The discovery of Sputnik Planum's unusual arrangement alongside Pluto's largest moon, Charon, has sparked interest in its formation, with some scientists speculating that it may involve a subsurface ocean that has influenced its surface features. The presence of ammonia in the ice covering Sputnik Planum suggests geological activity beneath the surface, indicating a dynamic and evolving world. As scientists continue to explore the data gathered by New Horizons, they are uncovering new insights into Pluto's intricate and dynamic nature, expanding the possibilities for future investigation. The varied landscape on Pluto's far side, including slopes, depressions, and fields, bear similarities to features observed on other celestial bodies with subsurface oceans. While the far side of Pluto remains partially hidden, scientists eagerly anticipate future missions for closer examination. The irregularities observed fuel hypotheses about Pluto's geological history and the role of its subsurface ocean in shaping its surface. These discoveries challenge traditional interpretations of planetary evolution and underscore the dynamic nature of distant worlds like Pluto. As New Horizons continued its mission, scientists speculated about the fate of Pluto's core over the long term. Radioactive decay within the core could have generated enough heat to cause surface deformation, potentially leading to wrinkles or fractures similar to those observed on Earth. However, when New Horizons captured images of Pluto's far side, it revealed gaps rather than widespread wrinkling, suggesting that Pluto's surface had partially frozen over time. This large crack running along the near side of Pluto resembles Earth's East African rift system, likely resulting from the freezing and expansion of a subsurface ocean. The age of this crack indicates that the ocean began cooling rapidly after reaching the surface, possibly creating conditions favorable for the development of life. Additionally, the reddish hue of Pluto's surface, indicative of organic particles, suggests the presence of complex organic compounds. Laboratory tests have shown that such particles can form through radiation, such as solar wind or cosmic rays, pointing to a potential scenario for their presence on Pluto. The discovery of ammonia-bound ice on Pluto's near side supports the idea that the dwarf planet may retain rich organic compounds. While this does not imply the presence of life, it suggests that conditions could support life if they were favorable. Measurements from Pluto's far side have not only supported the mission's success but have also led to the discovery of fascinating geological features, such as ice formations resembling tall structures. These formations, distributed evenly and rising sharply, present a significant mystery. Spectral measurements show they are composed of methane ice, forming a belt around the equator, but their origin remains uncertain, with theories ranging from atmospheric solidification to erosion by intense sunlight. Understanding Pluto's cold environment and landscape requires a thorough examination of its atmospheric conditions. Researchers are refining climate models to better reproduce observed anomalies and seek to replicate Pluto's atmospheric and surface conditions in laboratory settings. While the James Webb Space Telescope cannot capture high-resolution images of Pluto, its longer wavelengths may reveal additional discoveries. As we continue to unravel Pluto's mysteries, we embark on a journey that reflects humanity's insatiable quest for knowledge and the dynamic evolution of our understanding of the universe. The James Webb Space Telescope's ability to gather and analyze infrared light offers a unique opportunity to study interstellar objects, including those passing through our solar system. With its advanced capabilities, the telescope enables scientists to delve into the secrets of these cosmic visitors, providing a clearer understanding of their composition and origins.
This ongoing exploration underscores the importance of continued scientific inquiry in uncovering the mysteries of our vast and intriguing universe. James Webb Space Telescope, A New Era in Astronomy The James Webb Space Telescope, JWST, represents a new era in astronomy, bringing cutting-edge technology to the study of distant celestial objects and interstellar visitors. Equipped with advanced infrared capabilities, the JWST can observe cosmic phenomena that are otherwise invisible to traditional optical telescopes. This allows scientists to examine the early universe, star formation, and the composition of exoplanets with unprecedented detail. One of the most notable aspects of the JWST is its ability to capture infrared light, which is crucial for observing objects that are too faint or too distant to be seen in visible light. By detecting infrared radiation, the JWST can study objects that have been stretched by the expansion of the universe, revealing valuable insights into their composition and evolution. The telescope's sensitivity to infrared light makes it an ideal tool for studying the atmospheres of exoplanets, enabling scientists to search for signs of habitability and potentially even life beyond our solar system. In addition to its role in exoplanet research, the JWST is also poised to investigate the earliest galaxies and stars that formed after the Big Bang. By looking deep into space, the telescope can peer back in time to a period when the first stars and galaxies began to take shape, offering a glimpse into the universe's infancy. This capability makes the JWST an essential tool for understanding the processes that led to the formation of the universe as we know it today.